Dart Machinery recently revised some of their SHP castings. And I have one of the new small block Chevy aluminum heads right here. So here's the plan. First we're going to unbox and overlook the head for any obvious defects. Then we're going to fully inspect the cylinder head. And last we will compare it to the old casting. Now let's start with going over the specs of this cylinder head. See right here the part number is 126111. And the specs are, it is a 180cc intake runner. 64cc chamber, straight plug, I still don't know what VJ stands for, 202 intake valve, 1.6 exhaust valve, and it is a bare cylinder head. And as I said earlier, this is a new revised casting. Last video, we went over a couple of the old castings, part number 127111, and you can see the same specs are right there. And that did not go well. One of the heads had some issues. You can see all those X's. Those are not good. The other, well, you'll have to check out that video to see what happened to the other, but it is gone. As far as this new cylinder head, I hope things go a lot smoother. In fact, I really cannot wait to see what they changed, what they improved with the new casting. So let's get started. Well, last night I opened up the new cylinder head and Dart made a lot of changes. Many of them small, but a few big. And we'll get into that later. For now, let's go over the few defects I, I found. Okay. They all were on the deck side, so we'll start off right here in the corners. There's a bit of a, I guess, dented lip more so on this side and that's an easy fix just file them right down you can see on the other the old casting it appears it's already been you know filed off or so not a big deal but you know small finishing defect then I found here in a coolant port a chip and see where it was drilled there is a you know drill shaving or chip still in the hole and that is a cool hole, coolant port, not a bolt hole. So that's easily just picked out, but this is the kind of stuff you gotta inspect all cylinder heads for. You know, these little chips or pieces of extra metal here and there. Last, the biggest defect I found was this scratch right here on the deck. And it it catches my nail. And that definitely will go through the fire ring. So Typically at this point, I would contact the place I bought it from, you know, the warehouse, and negotiate for exchange. But it took over a month to get this cylinder head while they have, you know, over 60 of them in stock at DARP. So I'm going to go ahead with the video at this point, and then later I will contact them. But like I said, typically I prefer, that way I don't, further damage the head or they don't you know if they object to any of my inspection checks so I may be stuck with it I'm willing to take the risk because I don't want to wait any longer in making this video so as I said several changes otherwise packaging is the same same bag same box the new spec sheet which we'll go over and compare them later well, the old one was a, was a color edition. The new one, they didn't spring for the color. <laughs> Not that that really matters. It's just interesting. Also, I didn't notice last time, the dates are right on the bottom of the spec sheet. <clears throat> I kind of wish I wouldn't have sent the other one back so I could have compared the dates. I didn't notice at first. So that's interesting. You can see they're, they're a few years apart. You know, this one was just made in August. And, you know, it's October right now. Anyways, like I said, we'll compare those later. Next, I'm going to do my basic inspections. You know, I will check the deck flatness. I will check the valve seats. I will measure the throats. 
I will check all threads. And because there's a lot of changes to go over for the new casting, we're gonna skip some of the details. I'm just gonna basically do them now, and after this clip, I'll say they're good, or I'll let you know if I have any problems. So, let me get to work. Everything checked out. The deck is flatter than the old head. Didn't have those few spots where the small feeler gauge was catching, so that's great. Um, all the seats are good. You can see right here, the exhaust valve. We've got a nice wide pattern. Contact all around. Intake, a little bit narrower. A little lower on the valve than I like, but good enough. Here's a better shot of the valves. Uh, I measured the throats, and you can see right here, here's a comparison. This is the new head, and this is the old head. You see, the intake got just a little bigger, and the exhaust a few bigger. You know, good for the exhaust intake. I'm still not too hot on that size, but it is a 180cc intake runner, so it has a little bit more velocity. You know, it could probably get away with a little bigger throw. Also, there's a few other things I want to point out that I pointed out in the last video. Again, the SHP is a budget head. It is not as good as the Platinum Pros. It is a lower quality alloy. You know, it is not, you know, championship engine components. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to the comparison. <clears throat> let's start by comparing the spec sheets. I'm not going to cover all of it. Just the changes. You can pause to read them entirely if you want. Looks like they changed the port dimensions a bit. Wider but shorter intake. Exhaust is taller and wider. The exhaust port is now 5 cc smaller. That's good. Smaller exhaust ports is the trend these days. Flow is up, so of course the revised heads should make more power. 11 CFM on the intake side, 32 CFM for the exhaust. That's a nice improvement. Okay, on to the bottom half. Let's see. Not much different here. It says the guide is wider, but same seal size. Guide also is a bit shorter. Valve spacing has widened a bit more from stock. Uh, powder metal, some seat insert info, change, nothing I care about. No stud girdle part number yet, so the rocker stud spacing also probably changed. And that looks like it. Let's move on to the actual heads. Cosmetically, the new SHB casting has changed a little. You can see right here where Dart has laser etched their logo. I like when companies do that. They, you know, take pride in their product instead of just having a generic blank end. And they also have done it on the other side, of course. But I looked over this entire head and there is not a part number or size spec stamped anywhere. Whereas on the old casting, you can see right here, the part number and size chamber is stamped on the end. Also, I think on this other end is maybe a date code. I like when the companies do that too. So if Dart would maybe continue to just, you know, stamp a 64 over here, it would be helpful, especially when you're buying a used head. If we look at both cylinder heads from the decks, you can see some of Dart's changes. For example, up here in the pushrod area in the new casting, they've added material around the intake pushrod hole compared to the old casting which is much more open. While this hole is smaller, it should be sufficient for a typical cami used with a 180cc cylinder head. I've actually seen some larger heads with even smaller holes that need to be opened up. Next, if we look at the coolant ports, you can see many of them are the same size as bolt holes. Some even smaller. Whereas on the old casting, the majority of the coolant holes are larger. And that is to release the sand from the casting process. Modern processes have improved that the holes no longer need to be as large. If we look 
through one of these coolant holes, we can get a basic idea on the deck thickness. The new casting appears to be thicker. <laughs> My light will work. <laughs> and all those things are good for overall cylinder head rigidity, stiffness, and holding seal. In my opinion, the new castings chambers have some of the best improvements. While the overall shape is the same as the old casting, the inside area is shaped much better. Next, if we look at the spark plug, they have moved the location to more central, whereas the old casting, the spark plug is offset to the intake valve. And I forgot to mention this in my last video, but I actually prefer the more central location of the spark plug. Also, if we look at the machining of the spark plug, you can see there's only a little bit of thread on the roof of the chamber, whereas on the old casting, there's quite a bit you'd have to grind down if you wanted to improve the chamber. Oh, and it should be noted that these are two new spark plugs that have crush washers that are not crushed. But over here I have a used spark plug that is tightened and you can see, you can still see quite a bit of thread. As far as the seats, that is where some of the best improvements are. You can see the machining has improved greatly. On the old casting, you have these nice ridges that you have to blend. So they definitely have improved there. Also, I want to point out that the old casting does have one advantage the inside blending of the seats is better compared to the new casting, but they only need a light blend, mostly on the exhaust. The intakes are roughly the same as the old casting. And of course, you can tell from the chamber, the casting itself is much smoother compared to the roughness of the old casting. I mean, even if we look inside the ports, You can see the old casting is much rougher compared to the new cylinder head. And if we look at the guy bosses of the new cylinder head from the chamber, machining there has also improved a lot. All these things can be reworked and blended of course my light will cooperate but with the new cylinder head you're gonna save a lot of time and be, they're much better right out of the box with the heads flipped over there's one more thing viewable from the chambers that I'd like to show before we move on and that is the exhaust bowls on the new casting you can see right here as we enter the bowl this area is more filled in compared to the old casting where it is larger or more cut out. And from what I've been told, that area being filled in is better for lower lift, moderate type cams you see in your typical street build, whereas a more larger cut out area is better for higher lift top end performance type cams and builds. And if you remember from when I compared the spec sheets, this exhaust port is 5cc smaller and that is some of that 5cc's I believe. Got a little too much light, give you a better view. It's just a smoother and better looking port. You know, the sh overall shape compared to the old casting.
Once the heads are installed, this is the side you'll be dealing with the most. The hot side. You know, headers and spark plugs. So let's take a closer look. On the new casting, they've added a few extra things. For starters, an additional bolt hole on either side for you know the accessory spark plug wire looms, heat shielding, or whatever. In the old casting, there's only two bolt holes, and now you have four. Also, they added this boss down here at the center of the cylinder head. And that boss is sometimes used for drilling and tapping to add a coolant line between the center two cylinders. The old head does not have that boss. And do, some people do drill and tap heads there, or they'll weld the fitting there if they want to add that. It's a feature that's used if you see more in like, I guess circle track or endurance type racing. So it's interesting that they would put on a budget cylinder head. Next, let's uh, compare the exhaust flanges. You see right here, they have widened the flange around the exhaust port compared to the old casting, which is narrow on the bottom. And I like when they do that because if you're using you know, a tool to clean up the old gasket, sometimes you can damage a narrow flange easier. So it's just, you know, extra safety in my book. Let's compare the gasket fitment. Oh, well first, look at the ports. You can see right away in the old casting, the ports are just, you know, they're, they're you know, rough and not great. Because in the new casting, they are a much better finish. I'll put the gasket on here, the recommended Felpro 1404. You can see it right away. There's a lot of material you'd have to grind out if you want to make it fit the gasket or match. But in the new casting, you just drop the gasket on and you're good to go. I mean, there's a little bit, but there's nothing I'd worry about. And it's in the bottom where you don't really care. A few other quality things I noticed on this, these cylinder heads, one on each, is on the new casting, in the spark plug holes, you can see these divots on a couple of the cylinders. Not on this one but on this one as well. And it's like, a, it's like a notch or something right on the chamfer where these part, these heads use a gasket as spark plugging. So right here, there's one with a gasket and I got the gasket right here. It does cover the notch, but what I'm worried about is taking the spark plug in and out once that gasket is formed to that notch. So I don't like that. That's just a quality defect that I did not notice earlier in my earlier inspection. You can see in the old casting, the finish is better. Now, I did miss this in my, my review about the old casting. They did not chamfer the coolant port. And that actually makes a difference in just, you know, threading in the fitting. It's much easier with a chamfer. They did do that on the new casting. <laughs> of course I have no trouble. You see it's much easier to start. Now inside the ports, grab my light here. You can see the roof is a much better transition than the old casting. We have that big old bumpy guy boss. It's just a better port. Although it's larger here, the entire port is 5 cc smaller. And I'm betting that, and what we saw earlier in the bowl, is the extra 5 cc's less. Oh, and one more thing before we move on to the intake side. If we look at the new casting edge of the deck right here, compared to the old casting, again, we get, we get kind of an idea of the deck thickness. Remember when we compared the inside of the coolant holes when we were looking at the deck side? I'm not sure if that's the ideal way to measure or compare, but there it is. Almost forgot to mention, from the exhaust ports, you get a better line of sight too, to the cylinder. Here's the new casting. 
see right there, the circles are larger. That is because I believe they've raised the runner a little bit. Well, it's upside down. <laughs> Next, let's take a look at the intake flange size. It should be apparent right away that the new casting no longer has a exhaust crossover passage, unlike the old casting. So depending on your local emission laws, that can make a difference whether you choose to buy the new casting or not. Now, let's check out the intake gasket fitment. See, it's the recommended Felpro 1205. We'll set it on the old casting first, and you can see the fitment is, you know, pretty good. You know, no complaints. We'll put it on the new casting. Again, fitment is pretty good. It's actually a little better. These ports are a little more wider than the old casting. The only thing I really notice is the coolant ports don't quite fit. And I've seen this on other newer style heads. I don't know if it's, you know, they decided they don't need as much coolant flow. I don't know. Some people I've heard grind them out. I'm not super worried. As you can see on the old casting, the coolant hole fits the gasket much better. Anyways, oh, and one other thing. It appears there's more room above the gasket, but that's just because they machined the valve cover rail more than the old cylinder head. You can see right there the difference. Now, they may have done that because there is more material up here as well when you look in the valve cover area. You can see right here, if you compare these points right here to the old casting, you can notice that the casting on the, on the new head is thicker here. So, if you're a porter and you want to raise the roof, maybe make this head more like a raised runner head, they have, there's meat to do that. Another interesting thing up here I've noticed, so let me get my light real quick. Come on, work, there goes one. Is if we look in the intake runner stud hole, it is not a through hole. I can shine my light down here. You do not see any light. You look at the old casting, which is common for small block Chevy heads. It is a through hole. When they machine that, they break into the intake runner. So people often don't know, but you have to seal the intake runner studs so that the oil doesn't seep into the intake track. And I like that they did not break through for their you know, smaller budget, streetish type head. Another thing I noticed I like about the new casting is the floor. It is much more gradual compared to a typical small box Chevy head that has this nice dip right here midway. I like that that floor is more gradual and it probably will work better also if you raise the roof than this type of floor. Also, it's very noticeable, and if you look at every port, how much rougher the old casting is compared to the new. And in my opinion, it's maybe a little too smooth. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show inside the port, but I gotta flip the heads around to give you a better view. If we take a look down the intake runners on the new casting, you can see these bulges here on either side. That is because a cylinder head bolt runs through there. Obviously you need to seal that off from the runner. Next, if you look at here between the runners and the flange, and compare that to the old casting, it appears the old casting there is thicker. It's not really noticeable when you put the gasket on there. But it appears they have moved the runner a little that, that way. And if you remember where I compared on the spec sheets, the runners are now wider and they also widen the valve spacing. And that is why I believe there is a bulge there now. Whereas in the old runner, there is no bulge on either side. I'm curious how much of that bulge you can grind out. I don't know. Maybe that's a future video.
Let me know in the comments. Last, let's look over the valve cover area. I know it's not the most exciting part of the head, but there are some notable changes. For example, they have widened the valve cover rail. It's not much, but it should help seal better. Then, they have improved the oil drain back. You can see on the old casting how it's partially obstructed and you have to grind it out. Over here, they have machined the size into the head. Whereas in the old casting, it is cast. And that makes me wonder almost if they're going to use this same casting for multiple sizes and just see and see it larger. So, I don't know. They haven't released the 200 yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Over here, you can see that they have machined for the center valve cover bolt holes, but they did not drill and tap them. And typically today, most heads have the perimeter and the center bolt patterns, like on the old casting. You can see they did machine those and drill and tap. So I don't know if they just missed that step on this head or what. I also noticed <clears throat> these bumps there's one two three and at first i didn't know what those bumps were for and then it occurred to me they're probably for stall headers bolt pattern you can drill and tap because those headers are spread port so that's that's a cool feature last i noticed that the spot facing for the cylinder head bolts is smaller than the old casting. See a side by side right there. And I've had a problem with iron heads where that was, their heads were machined too small. And when I put the socket in there, it wouldn't fit. But these are aluminum heads and with aluminum heads, you should be using a bolt with a washer anyway, or studs with a you know, washer and nut. So. You shouldn't really have a problem that they're smaller. It's just, you know, interesting. I almost didn't compare this because I figure who really cares about the difference of maybe a few ounces between either head. And last video, I didn't even bother to weigh the old casting, but I'm glad I did this time. See for yourself over here on the old castings color spec sheet, 23 pounds bare. The new casting is black and white spec sheet. 23 pounds bare. Turn this on. You can see for yourself. Zero. Old casting. Zero. New casting. Dark, where's my three pounds of aluminum? <laughs>
you know, just all around good sales on the new casting. I still have to open up and check out these AFR heads. I'll get to them here hopefully soon. I've been using the one for a kosher by my computer. <laughs> I mean, if you think that's bad, don't ask about the crate. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, it's time to wrap things up. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Keep it real.